as we looked at Augustine in the narrative books, we focused on the development of the intellect and then the choices he made, that is to say, the faculty of the will. Here, what we've added is this third faculty. We have memory and intellect and will, and that these are all part of all of us. And therefore, we're not just getting a, a sort of picture of how Augustine wrote the narrative, but we're getting a broader picture of who Augustine is, and obviously, by a, a process of argument, who we all are. We all possess these three extraordinary faculties, all of which contain elements of mystery. Think of the struggle of the will, for example, in Book 7. Memory, intellect, and will. Augustine, later on in his magisterial theological, uh, theological treatise on the Trinity, is going to use those faculties as his way to talk about God as being both three and one. And again, uh, it would be kind of rash of us to try to summarize a very, very difficult work, but at least part of the Augustinian move in that work is to look into ourselves first, since we are created in the image and likeness of God, a text that we've talked about at great length earlier. One of the things that we want to do is go into ourselves and see how, uh, you know, to be more specific, if we're made in the image and likeness of God, we're made in the image and likeness of a Trinitarian God. And so what kind of clues are there about who we are uh, that allow us to talk about the Trinity, and he'll come back to those triple faculties of memory, intellect, and will as a way of doing that. In fact, he will, without, without sort of narrowing things down into easy brackets, talk about memory in terms of being a way in which we reflect God the Father, intellect a way that we reflect God the Son, and will the, the, the way we reflect the Holy Spirit. So it will not just be sort of a general three and one, three and one. We are one person, and yet we are memory, intellect, and will. God is one, and yet God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And another thing Augustine does with this threefold notion of what we are as humans is to talk about them in terms of past, present, and future. And in some real way, therefore, there's an, there's an analog between the memory and the past, obviously, the, the intellect and the present, the will and the future. And so there are a number of ways in which this Trinitarian reflection of who we are and who God is is an important thing that comes out of this discussion of memory because the treatise that Ron referred to, the book on the Trinity, was in fact something that Augustine was probably already toying with, if not actually writing, at the time he was finishing the confession, so that those two works come from the same period of his life and clearly have a lot of interplay, uh, which we obviously don't deal with in great detail here, but at least want to give you some flavor of. Before we leave memory and uh, move on to the final books of the confessions, I want to make one other observation about what Augustine says, and that is that he says, very obviously, that memory is a part of mind, and then asks the question, how much of what we call mind really is memory? He says also, if you think about it, the mind is certainly unable to grasp itself because the only thing that we have to think about with is our mind, and how can we use our mind to tell us something about what our mind is in its essence? So the mystery of mind and the mystery of memory are linked together in Augustine in Book 10 of the Confessions.